Hey there, this is Therese Skelly, and I am so excited that you are going to be listening to an episode of the Fiercely Brilliant Podcast. Do you like those two words? Fiercely Brilliant. My hypothesis is that you are here for a reason. We all are. Our souls have led us on journeys that have very often taken some twists and turns, and sometimes it's not pretty. Sometimes there's struggle and there's loss and there's challenge, and in the middle of that, there's always a way out. And it's those times that often lead us into our great life and work. So you're going to hear stories in these episodes of myself and other beautiful people that share the journey. They share how they got to the place where they're standing, working in their brilliance and being the powerful leaders that they are. So stay tuned and enjoy this episode. Hey, this is Therese Skelly and another episode of the Fiercely Brilliant Podcast. And oh, I'm excited to introduce you to Connie Jones. Connie, it's like we, I was on her podcast and we had a call earlier. It's literally like we're the same. She's got fabulous blonde hair and has more dogs. <laughs> but it's really fun when you meet somebody. We're like, oh my, oh my God. We're actually going to do a little podcast series in a few months because we, we're so aligned in so many things. So it is like, it's like, you're going to, you're going to just love the energy because you've been hearing it from me for, for a long time. So Connie Jones, I'm so glad you were here with us. Welcome. Thank you, Cerise. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. So pour into your listeners. This I know, I know. So, so tell us today what you do and what you love about it. Oh yeah. I, um, I, I am a, a warrior for people's hearts. I'm a freedom Ooh. fighter and I'm a coach for change makers. I love working with high achievers um, to help them step into their brilliance, to step into that, uh, what they were created for, who they are and what they were really created for so that yeah. they can show up in that brilliance and then build the life and the business that they really want to be, be um, putting out into the world that they, that they have envisioned in their heart that is the, for the impact, the fulfillment that they want to make in the world. Mm, that's so important. Yeah. So I know you were that high achiever and you have quite the story of what happens to high achievers sometimes. So why don't you share your story? Yeah, well, um, I will try to be as brief as possible. Um, so I was the high achiever, the performer, you know, um, was very successful at it um, early on. And even later on, I had a couple of little, you know, blips along the way that were warning signs. I mean, I, you know, and I just kept pushing through and uh, but at 39 years old is where the crash came, um, where mm. I just couldn't continue to do it anymore. Um, I was 39. I, I owned a, um, a very successful coaching and uh, counseling and coaching practice. Mm -hmm. I was a therapist or am a therapist, always will be, mm -hmm. but, you know, yeah. uh, just doing different work now. But um, so very successful at what I did, but it was working for everybody else. And I was helping everybody mm -hmm. else get transformation and freedom, but I was killing myself and I was a single woman. I was in a scarcity mindset. I didn't understand that it could be any different. So I just worked all the time. I had no life and wow. it literally ended in, I mean, long story short, ended in a, um, a physical, mental and emotional breakdown. Um, I mean, I don't mean mm -hmm. I was committed or anything like that, but I, I, I had adrenal, I was in adrenal failure. Mm -hmm. I had thyroid problems. I was, I had debilitating anxiety. And I literally wow. like couldn't get out of bed one day, um, just could not keep going on. And so I was, you know, the extreme of burnout um, and was pondering, you know, here's, I'm in the center of my calling. I actually love the work I do yeah, sure. and have always loved the work I did and, and always did even then just didn't know how to take care of myself in right. it and didn't know how to do it in a way that was sustainable and most profitable. I just thought you had to work more and work longer and harder in order to, mm. you know, pay the bills and do what I was, you know, and help everybody and didn't understand how to, um, to take care of myself in it. So that, uh, that was a really wow. scary, desperate moment yeah. um, because I didn't know what was going on at the time. I just thought, oh my gosh, you know, I'm losing it. And, um, I mean, I had known that, you know, I was pushing myself really hard and that it wasn't, that, that there had, I was feeling that call inside that, you know, I was yearning for something different and I had been oh. miserable for a while. 
but I didn't, um, I didn't know what else to do. So I just kept doing right. what I knew. So let's break this down a little bit. And we're going to get into, because this is the, this is the breakdown story. And we're going to get to the breakthrough story in a minute, but yeah. So you're a therapist and generally therapists come to it. I know it's a little bit of assumptions, but kind of codependent, kind of wired to take care of everybody. Is anything it's like, is it there? Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. I didn't, you know, I didn't, there, there, I didn't know my own worth, you know? And so at the right. time I was working in the name of my calling. <laughs> I was helping everybody yeah. and felt responsible for people not, and didn't know how to be responsible to people just for right. people. Right. And, um, and so I didn't, you know, I felt powerless. So you're um, taking on their stuff and probably working. Okay. Let's, be, let's talk about identity because I think, I think a lot of women, you don't have to be a therapist to have this one. A lot of women are wired such that, you know, we are who we help or we are what we give. And so, so there's a difference between, I love my work and I, I just, I have a high drive and I'm a high achiever, but how much of it, and like, talk about the but who am I without that? Like that identity piece to it. Cause I think people are going to relate to like, Oh my God, I, I couldn't do something else. Like what? So let's talk about that. Yeah. I mean, I didn't realize that's where I was getting my identity and yeah. all of my, about val my validation, um, from a being a doing, you know, um, Oof. I didn't understand how to be a being and being felt really scary and empty and lonely to me. Mm. And I didn't stop long enough. Actually, I was just shooting a video a little while ago about shame and yeah. about how we run, we, that the engine inside drives us in order. And we don't realize that it's to outrun those feelings of, of unworthiness. Right. And so we try to do enough to ha and have enough to be enough. And I just didn't feel mm. like I was enough. Mm. And so I found a sense of, I was settling for a sense of being for a, a, a being needed rather mm -hmm. than being valuable and and <sighs> within my own worth. I mean, we had a whole, like did you did y'all like when she said those words, my skin just started crawling because that is what we do, right? If I'm needed, then I matter. If I'm needed, then I know who I am. If I'm needed, ah, as opposed to well, what do I want? What works for my energy? What would I like? And so what you said is there were little clues, but but you sort of like, you know, when you're a high achiever, it's the, it's a blessing and the curse, right? We can just bulldoze through stuff. We can just make stuff happen, which yay on one hand and oh crap on the other hand, because it extends the, <laughs> the fantasy that you can do it. Right. It so, does. So were there clues, love? Were there, were there, were there relationships that struggled or other things before the massive breakdown? Like what, what was there in hindsight that you can go, oh gosh, there were clues. Oh yeah. Um, several things. Well, I didn't have many relationships. My relationships were one-sided. It was mm. me giving and me not receiving anything. Wow. wow. So raise your hand women. If you've ever done that one, <laughs> that was a big one. I didn't know how to receive. I was in that masculine energy, you know, yeah. just didn't have a clue how to, and that was, a, I mean, I've always been feminine. I don't mean that, yeah, but like yeah. just a, a, just a driving, just a driving just a, thing, just a driving, mm -hmm. striving. Uh-huh. And, um, and didn't realize that. And, um, so I would attract people who were emotionally unavailable or, I mean, even friends, you know, not just men. Yeah. Um, but, um, and, and, you know, didn't where I had to make up and always fill in the gaps. Um, mm -hmm. the second thing that for me was, um, I mean, obviously I was single, you know, so that was, I mean, I, I felt, I mean, I couldn't, I didn't have much time for a relationship, right. you know, I wasn't dating. Um, I was the, one of the other big things is that I had a shopping addiction. Um, and I, I talk about oh. it in my book a lot. I, I, I had a shopping addiction. I was, um, I, I was on um, a doctor had, I was also on a, um, I was addicted to Adderall, which I didn't know. I wasn't abusing it. A doctor had put mm -hmm. me on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but it helped me get through and push through what I needed to push mm -hmm. through. And so, you know, mm. there was some eating disorder stuff. And I mean, it was just all entangled in there. So I had a shocking right. addiction, addiction because I was not feeding my heart with anything. Right. Nourishing. Yeah, sure. I was sure. just, you know, gratifying in moments of re for relief 
you know, well, at least I'll, if I'm going to work all the time. I'm going to go buy what I want to buy, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I sure, mean, just sure. craziness, just, you know, just, it doesn't make sense looking back. I'm like, what in the world was I thinking? But it's, it, it, yeah. it's real when we're in it, we're so deceived into, into that cycle, you know? So if somebody's listening to you and they're saying, I, I am totally right there without them having to br literally break down physically like you did. What are some steps or how can they just start to pivot a little bit? Maybe it's some questions they could ask or maybe some decisions that need to be made. Like, like how would you, how would you go back and save yourself? So like, let's just, let's just help people with a resource right here. Absolutely. And I would, I would start with some, well, first of all, it's important to quiet the noise and, and, and mm. any, any, even if it's five minutes, 10 minutes a day and mm. start reconnecting to your heart and really listening to what your heart is saying, because there's no room in performance and achievement. There's no room for your heart. And so your heart ah. shuts down. And, and so it's, it's, it's getting somewhere um, where you can five, 10 minutes a day where that somewhere that breathes a little bit of life into you so mm -hmm. that you can listen and reconnect to your heart to hear what it has to say, because it will tell you what's going on. What if the heart's saying, I can't do this anymore. And you're yeah. like, but I make six figures I, or I'm in this relationship or I love this job or, or yes, if the heart can is saying, I can't do this anymore then listen to it mm -hmm. and ask for help. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, and you don't have to know it's, it's not, doesn't mean you're a failure. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean that, um, you've done anything wrong. It just means you've hit your capacity and actually that's not failure. That's success, mm -hmm. but you've hit yeah, your capacity yeah. and it's time to expand your capacity yeah. to carry more. And so sometimes, um, I, you know, we, we have to ask for help to do that from people who, have been through it and know how to expand our capacity mm -hmm. or help us expand our capacity. Mm -hmm. um, so ask for help, whoever that is, you know, um, and, and then especially people, I mean, you know, you, me, I mean, who, you know, who, whoever, who understands right. what that's like to live that in that world, because you do have to understand a higher achiever because it, it is it a is. different way yeah, of life, right, right. a different way of thinking. Um, the second thing that I would do is I would ask myself, what am I tolerating that I'm really not okay with? Ooh, good question. And everybody yeah. asks that, right? When you plow yeah. through and you can make things happen, you just tolerate stuff because you can't even get through it. But that's a fabulous question. Okay. Let's say they're tolerating a relationship that's less than or work hours that they don't like or clients that don't energize them. What's the first step once you, okay, get a toleration and then what? know that once you acknowledge it if mm -hmm. you if you stop if you stop denying it and and running from it then you can acknowledge it and if you accept it then give yourself well, first of all give yourself grace don't con don't, don't condemn right, it because right. that's the worst you know there's nothing there's no change that comes out of condemnation and judgment mm -hmm. it's uh, con change transformation comes out and new possibilities come out of when we open and get curious and so, and we, and when we accept and we love ourselves. Yeah. And so that's the second thing I would say is it, it, the second part of the answer to that is to love yourself in it, give yourself grace, accept that's where you are. Mm -hmm. And then ask yourself, okay, what, what's one step I could take to move forward in a direction that would give me a little bit of life or a little bit of freedom. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the other thing is you don't have to know how it's all going to get fixed. That's a lot of times we go backwards and stay stuck. That was me because I just, I couldn't see the way out. Right. So I would just stay in it another day and be like, okay, I can get through this day. I can just get through this day and yeah. then I'll figure it out. At some point, something will happen. Well, it doesn't change unless we are intentional about changing it. It's not, and you can just say, I don't have to like, you know, you just decide, you right? Figure it out. So you can just say either, you know, one prayer is God help me be willing yes. or I'm willing to be willing. Maybe you're not even willing, like be willing to be willing. Just be, so there's a little crack of willingness, then a new possibility emerges. That's, and that's, and it's magic how that happens, isn't mm -hmm. it? Because we don't have <laughs> to have all the answers. It, what happens is when we open and we're willing, the possibilities yeah. open. 
for us. And so new opportunities come, new, Mm -hmm. new, new, new ways of seeing things, new perspective, um, little shifts happen. Sometimes things work out for us when we just release it and no longer right. have grab. We grab. We're grabbing onto it. It just kind of moves out, and something else comes in. But again, if that feels too scary for me, I was paralyzed in it because mm-hmm. I was so terrified of not of losing income. Okay, let me ask you this, and we're talking about the income in a minute because it, yeah. it, I can see how that would be like. Uh, there's one way to m- grow the money. There was no. There was. And no I'm doing it. To yeah. Make. There was right. no other. It was like right. I've got to see these people, and I've got to make this money. Right. You know. Right. Okay. But I want to. I want to go back to the identity piece. So here's the question I have for people. Generally, identity. Like I am a worker. I am a caregiving person. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. And sometimes you just are like you and I are just naturally loving hearted, kind, generous, compassionate. That's just natural that we don't have to work to be that. We don't have to make sure somebody knows that. Right. But so the question I have, it's kind of, I was doing this, like, when I think of like alpha women and high achievers, like what's the one thing that if somebody would have said, you're a this, that you'd be like, I'm not. And it could be like lazy or, or, you know, like greedy, mm-hmm. like, like during that period, if it's like, what, selfish. What, there. Boom. That's the word. What are you striving not to be? What are you working so hard so that nobody can call you? And so that as long as you're being driven by, well, what if I'm selfish? What do I think of selfish? You'll go, you'll overdo and you'll give yourself up in pursuit of the persona of a person as opposed to, and sometimes I am selfish. Yep. Sometimes for my good, I'm a selfish, right? So, and I, I knew that my mom had, you know, she, that, that was programmed. You're in me, right. you know, my mom, you know, and so I had, I, I was, don't very, be selfish, don't be selfish, right? Be selfish. right. Exactly. You, know, so you can't you have see- it your way. I, mean, I, I knew all that. you can't really, you know, you can't just have it your way all the time. You can't do what, you know, Ooh, we can hear that. All, yeah. All of that. I mean, all of that, that we're told, you know, yeah. is so, and I just did not, I was, you know, running so you worked very hard to not be selfish. Mm-hmm. And so not being selfish got you some goodies, the, the love or the nurturance yes. that you desired, and it got you adrenals that were burned out and a life that was Absolutely. not to your liking. So, so now take us to the crash and how you, how you like reconstructed things. Yeah. So, well, when I crashed, it was, it was a, I could not go anymore. I, I mean, it was just like, wow. I, you did a hard, was, <laughs> hard burn, huh? It was, and I didn't realize it was the, emo, it was the adrenal, you know, failure. I mean, you know, I um, just could not function. I could, I didn't know how I could even pick my head up off the pillow that day. And it happened that fast. Wow. Um, it went from, you know, I mean, it, it was a slow decline, but it was mm-hmm. truly um, a hard crash. So then I, I had been pondering for several weeks. I had talked to a friend about it. I was really, um, you know, I was in angst all yeah. the time. I just, I wanted change, but I did, I was just paralyzed. And I talked to a friend and he had referred me to, he said, why don't you talk to somebody who is doing what you really want to be? Mm-hmm. Great advice. Mm-hmm. Um, I had put that off because I didn't have time. I didn't have <laughs> energy and to have money. <laughs> you know, All those things. Yeah. Right. You know? Well, so that day it became evident that all right, this is, you know, this is way beyond me. This has mm. gone to the next level. I have got to do something different and learn something different. And so I um I, I had already kind of identified um he had he had really he had connected me with somebody, mm-hmm. but I had not called her. And okay. so that day I called her. And mm-hmm. so that was the first step is, um, it's just asking for help and having somebody else in it with me because it mm-hmm. is really lonely when you are an achiever too. That's the other thing. We don't realize how lonely we really are. Well, the mm-hmm. thing is your, your default is you're going to go back to your old ways. Yes. I know how to hustle. I can do, I'll just, I, 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 I. so it's literally like breaking it's, and it's kind of like an alcoholic addict. Like these are addictive patterns. It, you need it, some it, recovery. It, you need some sobriety from the, from the old ways, right? It totally was. Yes. Mm. I, I was, you know, I mean, I, I was a workaholic from the word go and had, and didn't know it, you know, didn't have any idea. And so I was, I was ready to be rescued out of it, but I didn't realize that I was the only one that could rescue myself out. I just didn't know what steps to take yeah. that were not going to, all I saw was you're either going to crash and you're going to have to give it all up or 
um, you know, maybe somebody has some answer for you, but I didn't know what the answers were. So how then did you shift? So let's talk about, because what you said earlier is the way I was working was tied to the money. I only know one way to make money and that was to hustle and grind and burn. That's it. And now you make money and you don't do it that we just had a talk and she didn't work all weekend and she did all kinds of fun, yummy, luscious, nourishing things. And I'm home, as you can see, and I'm home today <laughs> on, um, as my animals are, I'm, I'm, I literally work three days a week, mm -hmm. um, seeing clients. I, I love my life. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I work three days a week seeing clients. I, you know, I mean, I do other creative things when I'm, you know, um, but I don't work on Mondays or Fridays and I take off on weekends and it is, I never thought I would be here and I'm more successful than I've ever been. And, you know, and, and a, I need to say this, it, it was never about money for me. I would have been yeah. in something completely different if it, if money drove me, it was not that it was out of a survival. You know? yeah, sure, <laughs> it, was sure. fear, it was all fear-based yeah. um, from that standpoint about money. And, um, but I didn't understand that, you know, it's actually when I'm in alignment and when I'm doing what I love mm -hmm. and I'm in um, places and, and doing things and being more instead of doing that I'm opening up and unlocking abundance. That's the way that the universe was created, that God created it. I'm unlocking all of that to be supported in who I am and what I am put here to do. I didn't understand that. So if you had the old beliefs, because we didn't, haven't used this term yet, but you were running it, proving energy. Yes. Right. Proving okay. I'm good enough, proving I'm taken care of enough, proving I'm not selfish, proving, proving, proving. And now there's just honoring and valuing, right? So, so give me a picture of like what's inside your head and listeners listen to this, like this is called modeling, right? So you saw the snapshot of her before I've got to do more. I've got to take her like, that's the snapshot of what was running her. And so if you would say, cause you're using the terms being and allowing and all those things grounded a little bit more. So like, like if I were to listen to your head, how do you, how do you approach enrolling a client? Like, what do you know to be true? How do you approach setting your prices? How do you approach three days a week versus five or six, right? Like how, how what are the self-talk things that go through your head or the under, under, like the foundation that allows you to live in the world this way? Yeah, well, it's my faith for faith. one, you know, I mean, okay. I am, I, I stay really connected to my heart. Mm -hmm. and to and i practice daily spiritual disciplines um and i do get quiet every day and i do take the time to mm -hmm. find that flow inside of me and so i've learned to tune my instrument um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's my body you know i've yeah, learned to yeah, tune yeah. my heart my and, and and live in more coherence and mm -hmm. i can tell now when i'm out of coherence versus and and out of alignment and in the proving and the striving. And when I'm in that, I don't do anything out of that place because I know it is not productive. You got to get back to alignment. I got to get back to alignment. Mm -hmm. And so I stay in alignment and I have designed, I literally, I designed my business based on the, the, not only the heart, my heart and what, mm -hmm. you know, is most important to me, according to my lifestyle values that are, are most important to me, which are freedom and spaciousness, mm -hmm. love and connection and community, mm. um, adventure, um, impact, mm -hmm. and, um, and then wealth circulation is, is nice. to, to make bigger impact. And those are my yeah. lifestyle values. And so I, I created, I was got real clear about that and about what is most important and what I felt called to most in this, mm -hmm. in this life. And, um, and then built my business to, honor those lifestyle values. And when those, when I'm not in, in balance or alignment with those, then, um, then I, I am, I'm very aware of that because mm -hmm. life it's, 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 it's stressful. It's chaotic, well, sticky. It's frustrating. So, you know, all of yeah. Was so there I, Go ahead. I've literally set my, I've, I've literally built my programs and set my pricing and set everything around that. And when I'm grounded in my heart, energy when my and I'm grounded in that heart space um and I'm not down in that desperate um mm -hmm. lack um lower vibe energy then um and I'm not connected to my creator 
then um and i'm in that self-sufficiency proving right, and stuff right, right, right. i just know that there's nothing good that's going to come out of that so i don't follow i don't follow you don't that. do it you don't do it no. well if you know if you, i love it because before it was so much about the other taking care of the other getting validated from the other letting the world give, gives me reflection of my value and now the yumminess and this is how it's supposed to be guys this is how it's supposed to be what would serve me what's the highest use of my gifts and what would serve my energy my values my lifestyle my goals what it might sound radical if you're in the the previous the the but i have to take care of everybody mode but this is the dream and this is the promise and i think how do you align up because i know you're you know deeply connected to god mm -hmm. i think sometimes in religion there can be oh it's better to give to receive like there's there's kind of sure. like misunderstandings about our position and our value and our worth so how do you like line that up with your spiritual beliefs well i um i believe that when that we give out of overflow that we don't give out of an empty cup and so Beautiful. i i don't want to do anything I, I tell god all the time lord i want to be where you are because when i'm where you are then everything's better and when i've mm. walked off in a proving <laughs> or an or needing to be needed energy or trying to do something to be a superhero or to be self-reliant or self-protective mm -hmm. or self whatever mm -hmm. or self-sufficient or you know um then and in looking for my living i call it living for my significance instead of living from my significance Ooh. when i am living for my significance then i am giving out of a place that will produce rotten fruit right right and so i would i i would rather give out of a, an overflow and when i am aligned and when i am um true to me and feel called into something then it then i have so much more to give first yes. of all my the the my inner gifts my wisdom the wisdom and discernment that he's given me are lit up and i yeah. and i and i and transformation happens really quickly with my clients because right. i know that i'm called to work with them versus right. when i'm trying to force something to happen that out of some place of fear mm. or scarcity or need it, there's not i don't have the i don't have the grace i don't mm. have the grace to work with them the same way mm. So it just so doesn't make well, sense. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Well, I think we did a really good job. I wanted to I wanted to show the contrast. Even though you like the world would have looked at you, Connie, and said, that is a successful woman. She's got a successful business. She's helping a lot of people. Look at her. And yet it wasn't the right fit. And it was sourced from something wrong. Like you said, trying to get my significance, trying to prove. And now you're actually probably doing greater work. You're helping people in a different way because you're nourished and, and aligned with your purpose and what works for your energy in life absolutely and the last thing i want to say about that piece is that you know i didn't realize i was actually mm. when we were getting breakthrough and freedom mm. i was helping my clients get freedom and breakthrough but like when i wasn't free I was, <laughs> I was only able to help other people get transformation and breakthrough at the level that i had it and so mm. i was even though i was helping them some i was not helping them truly break free because i wasn't truly free and so I was staying limited and they were limited and we were not, it, it, we were getting minimal benefit out of that. Yeah. Not, wow. you know, and so, I, and when I began to make changes, my biggest fear was I'm going to disappoint people and they're not going to, who, what are they going to think about me doing yeah. this and changing yeah. this? And, you know, I'm going to say no, and I'm going to do this and I'm, you know, it's going to look Raise like your this. rates probably, right? Raise my rates. <laughs> and, and, you know, and that was hard. That was really hard um, because I am a pleaser and, but I just, I, I couldn't continue to stay stuck and let them stay mm -hmm. stuck either. Boom. And so that's the place I, I came from. So if somebody is listening and says, I, I, I need to know more about like, well, who is this cool woman with a great accent and multiple animals? Right. There? Yeah, you forgot my accent at the beginning. You, I, I thought you were going to call me out on my accent. The accent. <laughs> call you out. Oh my God. Oh my God. I could listen to you all day. I love the accent. So, so if folks want to find you, where do they find you? Oh, yes. Well, um, I have a website, ConnieJonesCoach.com. So um, that's the best place. And there's places there where they can, um, you know, uh, contact me directly. Um, they can make um, a free 
make an appointment, a free um, vision, vision strategy session there if they want to have a, you know, um, a conversation with me. Um, and they can email me at Connie J at Connie J Connie Jones coaching Connie Jones coach dot com. That was a mouthful. Perfect. And we'll have the links in the show notes as yeah. well. And okay. you have a you have a free gift. So we'll talk, yes, talk about I do. This. Yeah. And and also on Connie Jones coach dot com is a um, there's five powerful questions to help supercharge your success and satisfaction in your mm. life, in your business. And so these are and they're not just questions. They are questions with in with more in depth um, conversation to really help you think if you are in that stuck place yeah. to really help you move out. These were five of the questions that I used on myself to, or, or that my coach, you know, helped me use to move out of that stuck place. And I, I help my clients, mm. clients move through these questions too. So it's a really, it'll help, help you get movement. Perfect. So as we wrap up, just kind of go into that beautiful heart of yours that you reference a lot. And what is there anything else that needs to be said anything that is just inspiration is there anything else you know i um i think the biggest thing that i want to speak to in people is i had that that belief that well everybody else can do this but i couldn't mm. and everybody else has figured it out and that's her story or you know, that worked for her and, mm -hmm. but she doesn't know what kind of situation I'm in right, or, right, right. or, you know, or things are like, I could never do that because of this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And what I want to say is there is going to be that resistance and that resistance is internal. And that resistance is going to tell you, it's going to feed you all the lies about why it can't be different for you. But I promise you it can because you are supposed to you are just like any of us can break through and get freedom mm -hmm. and become who we were created to be mm -hmm. and none of us were created to live in a prison of, or bondage Beautiful. and it doesn't matter what you've done or what you haven't done or how wrong you got it or you know what you didn't you know get along the way you can still get it mm -hmm. and there are people out there like you and me trace that that I'm doing it we <laughs> love helping other people get that freedom mm -hmm. because we know what it's like to live in prison yeah, I could not have this is a perfect place to wrap up. So, oh, my beautiful friend with a fabulous accent. Yeah. So this has been we're not done. We're gonna we're gonna have to figure out what podcasts we're gonna do together. I think maybe yeah. Shane, maybe maybe something about that. But um yeah, yeah. our journey is not done. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how business owners, and I would say, you know, all business owners, but especially women business owners, just how much we undervalue ourselves. Oh, you know, and that ding, ding, ding aspect of 100%. Our yes. I think that, I think that's our podcast. We'll look forward to that in a few months. We'll get it done yeah. <laughs> anyway. So you have been a delight. Thank you for sharing your heart, your journey. You are an absolute inspiration because um, things look good on the outside and, and yet you went through the, the breakdown. And so thank God for you. Thank God you listened and you, you can be the demonstration for a new way of being your gifts in the world and just mwah, thank you so much so like i always say my friends listen to this show think of two women that come to your mind you say oh sister friend you got to hear what this woman said you don't have to kill yourself you don't have to overgive you're worthy just by virtue that you made it here alive right and so i want you to listen to Teresa and connie's show today because oh you need to hear this so make sure you share this with two people that, that, that need to hear this message. And so thanks again for listening. Peace and blessings. Bye now. Hey, I really appreciate you listening to that last episode. And I would love to get to know you a little bit more and to get to connect with you on a deeper level. And here's what I suggest. I've got a Facebook group that corresponds with the content of these podcasts. It's called Fiercely Brilliant Women in Business with Therese Skelly. So if you just search Facebook, Fiercely Brilliant with Therese Skelly, you'll find the group. It's a really nice group. It's a small group and I'm super active in it. Each week we have a lot of supportive conversations. I share a lot of resources. I do a lot of coaching on the spot and I would love to have you join me there. So if you like the vibe of this podcast, 
and you want to hang out with a pretty darn cool community of women, join us at Fiercely Brilliant on Facebook with Therese Scali. Alrighty, peace and blessings, and I hope to see you in the group. Bye now. Thank you.